Hello guys, welcome back to the channel. Please hit subscribe and like to keep updated with all of my content and future videos. So the general rule of thumb is to eat animal foods until satisfied. You'll notice a pound of steak is more satiating than a pound of french fries. So don't be surprised if the food volume that you're eating is significantly less. Now, many notice that a lot of the time they're gluttons and simply chase the full, you know, fullness feeling of eating, which is different to being satiated. So you should feel like you can no longer eat enough a bite, but not that you're bloated and absolutely stuffed. So what's on the menu? Beef, lamb, wild game, pork, fish, eggs, and dairy if you can tolerate it. Some also add things like bone broth and organs if you happen to like them. Many people that start this diet often have their fat intake too low. I'm gonna go into that a little bit later, but you have to opt for fatty cuts of meat. So you're thinking ribeyes, 20% fat ground beef, chicken thighs versus breast, etc. The fat portion is important to help you turn yourself into a fat burner as opposed to a sugar burner. Now, some people have issues with rendered fats, in which case butter or ghee is a useful addition if you can tolerate it. You will know if you're one of those people because in the first few weeks you'll probably get loose stools, which is quite common, but not necessarily suggesting that your body doesn't thrive on the diet, at least not yet. There is always an adaptation period when changing from one way of eating to another. Now, most people find themselves eating between one and two pounds of meat per day, usually coupled with some of the additions that I mentioned earlier. For a more precise method to calculate your starting macronutrient intake in terms of fat and protein, I recommend watching some of the videos on my highly informative YouTube video playlist that I will link above somewhere around here. So to quickly outline, I'll say that most people, not all, but most, typically fall between 100 to 160 grams of protein and fat each respectively. Now this is per day, not per month or per week. This is what you're gonna be having each day for the most part. This may sound obvious, but I'll explain it as in terms of macronutrient intake and not weighed food grams. General recommendations usually default people to eat around twice per day, sometimes once, sometimes twice. I've noticed the vast majority of my clients are eating around two meals per day. And that seems to be commonplace amongst the community online. As time progresses and you get used to the diet, you'll find you naturally deviate to larger and also smaller portions of food over that time. This is normal, and you may find you have specific animal foods more, more so than others. It's a good suggestion to actually follow those hunger cues and adjust your meal choices accordingly. Now that's just the first week. Most people notice by about week two, um, a very powerful effect in relieving their digestive issues. They may also achieve some fat loss, if that is their goal. Um, and as the body reaches its absolute nutrient requirements to thrive, things will begin to heal quicker. So say you've got a bit of loose skin, your skin's dry, maybe your hair isn't growing as much, a bit like mine. In which case you might notice those sort of healing processes begin to accelerate. Now, a little bit further along the line, you might notice that any autoimmunity you might have will actually begin to reduce. So the arthritic flare-ups you have may start to actually reduce. There's lots of good content online from very specific people that, you know, just talk about their autoimmunity. Um, Phil Escott is a great example if you've had psoriatic arthritis. Ben Hunt talks about his gout attacks and how he's used a carnival diet to successfully put that into remission. Then there's even more people. So you can literally almost Google or type in YouTube your disease state, your autoimmunity, and find someone that aligns with what you're trying to achieve. And sometimes you can actually emulate what they're doing and find out what they found most useful. Now the dark side of dieting or this way of eating. I get asked a lot about what happens if people cheat in the diet. Will they lose their results? Does it just happen just there then? They've got to start, start all over again. Um, I'd say no. Oftentimes it's just a minor setback. And say you're thriving and you feel 100%. That one or two meals or days worth of junk food or inappropriate food may set back your results in terms of how you feel acutely at that period of time. But you can be pretty damn rest assured that if you continue to eat properly, so the carnivore diet with the foods that you like within it, you'll start to actually begin to thrive again. Now, it's very individual. The people that are most active, the most initially healthy, will notice that they can actually deviate from the diet a bit, get back on track without much 
neg negative. Now, once your body becomes adapted, so you're eating a fat heavy, meat heavy sort of diet, you'll notice that your body sends a signal to your brain when you've actually eaten enough food. Now, when you eat the wrong food, that doesn't happen so much. That's why people often binge and all like the, the junk food. So think French fries, Rice crispy Treats, things like that. Things which are just full of sugar and carbs and crap your body doesn't need. These foods will release a strong dopamine response, in which case they become hyperpalatable, addictive. That's what the food industry has done to them. They're ultra-processed foods created specifically to make you eat more and more and more of them and make you feel sick. Now, some of the negative effects I explained um, you're looking at localized inflammation. Perhaps you have bad sore elbows or hands. Your knees are a bit sore. That is usually a direct result of the diet or also injury. But you'll notice that inflammation will go up and up and up and up. And eventually get to the point where you no longer want that feeling. In which case you get off all the junk food and you begin to get back on track with the carnivore diet. Some people also notice digestive distress. Very common. Your body is effectively burning fat by the point you're on a carnivore diet, especially over the longer periods of time, such as the months and years. And when you deviate, your gut microbiome will sense that and it will say, I don't like this. I'm going to give you digestive distress so you do not do it again. Your body gives you these signals to set, tell you to stop doing it. Another common thing amongst people that tends to cheat on the diet is they seem to require more hydration to feel better, um, more electrolytes, more powders, more supplements. That's a result of having a leaky gut. Also a result of having ineffective nutrient absorption. So we're looking at a lot of different facets here. It's not just get rid of all the food, away you go. It's also getting rid of it for good. That's the hard part, and I relate to a lot of people that struggle to do that. I'll briefly outline a starting point, which I find a lot of people find quite useful. So my typical recommendation to most people is 1.5 grams of protein to two grams of protein per kilo of body weight. So a 100 kilo man will eat something like 150 to 200 grams of protein. Now, if you're physically active, that amount may increase. It may be much more than that. But remember, when your gut is healed from a carnivore diet, you will no longer require so much food because the food that you are taking in is assimilated and digested much better. Now, my approach to a carnivore diet that I believe is optimal is a pure strict carnivore diet. Um, people constantly misrepresent what I say online, which is really frustrating. But what I'm saying is for optimal health outcomes, a person will do a strict carnivore diet. So the meat and the fat. However, if people want to deviate, that's completely fine. That's completely up to them. I'm not here to exile them to a, a demonic evil place because they've cheated on the diet. That's not the case. It's just you'll notice that you'll get some side effects that you're previously having when you're on a mixed macronutrient diet. Now, hopefully that's been useful to you guys. Remember, hit like, subscribe if you want more content like this. And please do check out my playlists, which are available on my YouTube channel. I talk about heaps of stuff to do with body composition. So that's building muscle, losing fat on the carnivore diet. Thanks very much. Build muscle and lose fat on the carnivore diet.